for this day i thank the lord for this day and i just thank the lord for us coming together one more time for this study um now i have been trying my best to keep things to a minimum adding and deleting information and trying to be real respectable of your time and your attention to this study but i'm going to really need your patience with me um, for this one um, faith and faithfulness has become such an important part of my life until i really feel like i should have changed my name <laughs> to patricia faith white or something because um, that's how much it has become embedded into my life. If you want me to purchase anything from you, put faith on it and you got me as a customer. Um, my, um, when I go out to Freighter Hospital, that is, I go to the Faith Clinic and I just, I am truly, faith is the fruit. Faithfulness is definitely my fruit. So I am unapologetically and without a doubt, a woman of faith. Um, thank you for all the faith stuff. Uh, I got my little faith shirt from my little cousin who started her little business yesterday, Triple Threat Urban Apparel. So she was able to get me a shirt and my little face covering mask ready. So I'm ready, I'm ready. Yes, like I said, put faith on it and you got me as a customer. But um, you might want to get a pen and paper and take notes on this one because um, I will be throwing a lot of scriptures your way. So um, yeah, you might want to jot down some of these scriptures or go back and replay them. So get your pen and paper or your note taking device and get ready. So. Um, good morning, Auntie. Good morning, Miss Millie. Good morning to everyone. So I'm going to go on into this. Um, I'll do our prayer. Father God, thank you for this morning. Thank you for this day, this beautiful day. The sun is shining, Lord. We thank you. We thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for watching over us last night as we slept. We thank you, Lord, for just being an awesome God. Lord, we ask, dear Lord, that you help us through this day. Help us through this study. Help us to see that if we stand on your word and be faithful to you, then you will be exceedingly, do exceedingly and abundantly more than we can ask. So, Father, now we're asking that you touch those that are sick all the cancer patients and all those that are sick with any type of illness be a healer for those that are depressed or with anxiety be deliverance for those that are dealing with death in in their families our cousin will be buried today lord um, i pray for the gilbert family i ask that you comfort all those that may be dealing with the loss of a loved one help us to stand on your word lord so, Father God, I ask that you help me to say what you will have me to say through this message. I thank you, Lord. I ask that you bless everyone that will hear me today. Bless everyone. Bless their families. Bless us individually. Bless us collectively. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Mr. Mark. Good morning. Whew. Listen, I could barely do this study, writing it out and preparing for it without getting so emotional. So I'm very transparent. My book, my life is an open book. So I will be sharing some things. Usually I try to stick to certain things and but Faithfulness has a lot of my personal testimony and how I have had to work on this character and how it has become so strong into my life. So um, our scripture for today or for this study 
is, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Galatians 5, 22 and 23 in the New Living Translation. Our other scripture is Matthew 18 and 20. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. Faithfulness. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. Lamentations 3, 22, and 23 in the New Living Translation. Casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. 1 Peter 5 and 7. He didn't say like if you would get um, like you need to get another job because you lost your last job or if you have a headache, you you have any type of illness or even with this corona illness or issues that's going on. We don't have to pick and choose which care we're going to take to the Lord because he said, cast all your anxieties, all your cares, all your concerns on him. Why? Because he cares for you. I will try not to go into every detail, but I'm going to start with this. In 2008, or around 2008 and 2009, I was had been sick for a while, and I had um, going, been going back and forth to the hospital, and found out that I had been di- that I had been diagnosed with a pheochromocytoma tumor. The doctor who had just come here from um, the MD Anderson in Houston found out about the tumor, set me up for surgery. I had surgery and they removed the tumor. This tumor was about to take me out. And um, I got the tumor removed and for the next six, every six months for the next three years, I had been back and forth to freighter because they had to keep an eye on the tumor in my body to make sure that at the time they said it wasn't cancer. And they told me that I would need to come in every six months. 2012, when I went in, they told me that the, um, set me in the arm um, down. I was my, it was my first day of my vacation from UPS. I was planning on going on a trip with my goddaughter Yanni. I go for my appointment. I said, let me get this appointment out the way first. And I go for my appointment. I'm alone. And the doctor, Dr. Evans tells me that, I'm sorry to tell you, but you have cancer. So not only did I have cancer, but it was at the stage four at that particular time. So I um, sitting there like unbelievable and it was unbelievable to me. I was in shock and everything. So I didn't know what I was going to do. So what I thought that I needed to do was talk to my pastor, one of them. So I, on Mondays is Pastor Malone's sabbatical. I mean, that's not his sabbatical. That's his um, Sabbath day. And but I blew up his phone. I was calling him, I was calling Pastor Hopgood, and I just I needed a word. I needed to hear something to get me through this. This was nothing like what I had saw on TV on the commercials about cancer. Now it was me, and I was wondering what was I gonna do. So it's about 18 minutes, 15 minutes from my house to Freighter campus. And I was wondering how I was going to get home and everything. And my doctor asked, did I think I needed to call somebody to come and pick me up? And I said, or to come ride home with me or something. And I said, no, 
So after I talked, pa passed him along, ended up calling the hospital. They passed him in, we ended up talking to him, and he said, Patricia, you're gonna be fine. I said, okay. So I got in the car and what was supposed to be 15, 20 minute ride from Freighter seemed like an eternity. I thought of everything and um, wondered what was I gonna do? What, I mean, you hear about cancer, you see cancer and now it was me. So um, after hearing Pastor Malone playing that over in my head, Pastor Hopgood called me on my way home. I had pulled over to listen to him. He prayed for me. And I kept hearing God say, where is your faith? And I mean, I had been hearing about faith all my life. I felt like I had walked on faith many times. I've had issues where faith had to come forth, but this was different, God. Now it was cancer, and it was cancer diagnosis for Trish. What was I going to do? So I um, thought about it, and I, I, I said, okay, I just need to get home. I need to, you know, I was thinking in the car, how am I going to tell my children this? How was I going to tell my family of this? And I just didn't know what, what I was going to do. So I didn't realize that my destiny and my journey had already been predestined for me by God. The cancer, the job, the loved ones, everything that I was about to go through had already been orchestrated by God. I mean, like he knew me, I was his child. He knew me before I knew myself. So what I was, should have been hearing that I didn't hear was get ready, get ready, get ready. Because things were getting ready to really, really change in my life. Faithfulness. God is not human that he should lie not a human being, that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? Numbers 23 and 19. God has been faithful to us, even during this corona pandemic. He has supplied all of our needs and he has kept his promise to never leave us nor forsake us. The word says he will pour, pour out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. I believe that must be those times that I'm blessed so much that I have to call others to come and get some of what I that some of what I have or drop it off to them. In other words, if he said it, my faith aligned up with his word has convinced me that he's going to do it according to his will. Not only is the question for today as it was for me, where is your faith? But how much faith do you have? In Matthew 17, 20, it reads, I tell you the truth. If you have faith, even as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move. Nothing will be impossible. I haven't actually put my eyes on, on a mustard seed. <clears throat> Excuse me, but I have read that a mustard seed is about one to two millimeters in diameter. It's so small, it's nearly unbelievable that Jesus said that faith that big can move a mountain. As small as a mustard seed is, it can grow into a 20 feet, 20 foot tree your faith is not supposed to remain the same size. It is supposed to grow. How does it grow? With every anxiety, every care that you trust God to handle, and he shows his faithfulness. That's your faith growing. Trust him and have faith in him. This says, let your faith be bigger than your fear. My little sign. Faith over fear. Now, 
I don't believe that you can really put a measurement on faith, like a small, medium, or large. I believe that the mustard seed was an illustration or parable to help us to see that if we would, if we would or should just have a little faith and then watch it grow. O oh, ye of little faith, not anymore, not me. I ask God to supersize my order. I knew I had at least the size of a mustard seed, but I have walked in faith, put, put my God at his word, and faithful, faithful, faithful is our God. I heard Pastor Keon Henderson say, and you might want to write this one down, there's always an event before there's an appointment. There's always an event before there's an appointment. I'm telling you, I have seen it happen. And each time I had to take my faith for that event and watch God be faithful through my testimony, through my appointment. Let me give you just one. And Lord knows I would like to give you many. But the one that I have is the stage four cancer diagnosis that I received eight years ago was the event but me telling this cancer fighting sister and that cancer fighting sister and that friend that's helping that cancer fighting person my godmother who sometimes felt like nobody else could understand what she was going through while she was going through her cancer telling them all to just hold on it ain't over until God says it's over. And we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Now that, that was my appointment. Faithfulness. Malachi 3.10 reads, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse so there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord of Heaven's armies, I will open the window of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test. Malachi 3.10 in the New Living Translation. No, I'm not talking about tithes and offering. You know how we can get when we hear tithes and offering. But I am talking about faith. God is telling us to take your faith, a mustard seed or watermelon sized faith, and test me. I don't know a whole lot about the Bible like I wished I did. I try to gain as much knowledge as possible. But that that I do know, I stand on that very firm. So I was diagnosed with stage four cancer. I tried to work and eventually I had to go on disability. While on disability, fighting for my life, UPS sent me a Dear Jane letter in the mail informing me that my almost 30 years of service had been terminated. I didn't receive a card or receive a call asking how I was doing do you know when or if you'll be able to come back to work? But they had decided to terminate my position while I was on disability. That's a whole nother story. So I'm terminated from my job and I think, okay, Lord, what am I supposed to do? I have a cancer diagnosis. Now my job has terminated me. So I went from working a job to going on disability. So I was thinking, what am I going to do? And I started thinking about my mortgage, my bills, how was I going to survive? And I said, okay, where is your faith? But God. I was thinking about the car that I had just recently purchased and was still paying on it. And I thought this will probably be the first thing to go. 
how was I going to afford a car note? But God. The car was the first thing to get paid off a year before it was scheduled to be paid off. What a faithful God. What a faithful God. So now I don't have to worry about if I don't have a ride to my doctor's appointments, the many doctor's appointments, if no one is available to take me, as long as God gave me the strength, I can at least get to and from my doctor's appointment. So what I thought was a care or concern or worry, I cast my care and my concern and worry to the Lord because he cares for me and he took care of me. The job where I had nearly neglected my sons for had now terminated me. I have had many jobs at many different companies and this had been the first and only time I had been terminated. So just this or that or where I was going to need my faith supersized at all for all my cares that I need to have, now I need to really have a talk with Jesus. So I could take that mustard-sized faith and take it to see how he's going to come through for everything else. So that mortgage, that electricity, the phone, the food, through the prayers and generosity of others and the faithfulness of God, I haven't missed a beat. There's a song that we used to sing or that you've heard, but I had a praying grandmother. Well, I had a praying mother, a grandmother, aunts, sons, grandson, friends, families, pastors, neighbors. I had a praying community that was back me up. So prayer is so powerful. Faith and faithfulness, event and appointment. Being terminated from my job was the event. Being able to help my son homeschool my grandson during a corona pandemic was one of my appointments from that event. Faithfulness, faith like Noah. We saw, we saw that a lot at the Ark Encounter in Kentucky. My son and I were there a couple of weeks ago. It took Noah and his crew anywhere from 55 to 75, maybe 85 years to build this this ark. And you can read more details about Noah and his ark. So depending on what you read, what you read or study or hear from others, it took Noah all these years to build this ark and there was no rain. So God tells Noah to build this ark so he will have a place to safely store people and animals when he sends this big storm. Year after year after years, they were building this ark and no rain. People thought Noah was crazy. Then it happened. It rained. So you can read all about it in Genesis. How about faith like Sarah? Here's someone that should definitely go in the Faith Hall of Fame. Beautiful Sarah, the wife of Abraham. You can read about them in Genesis and Hebrews. God promised Abraham that Sarah would conceive and bear a son. Abraham believed God and Sarah believed and followed her husband. Sarah suffered waiting and waiting for this child of promise. Sarah was childless until she was 90 years old. And just when Sarah and Abraham should have been signing up for their AARP, their Medicare, or tapping into all of their over 65 perks and uh, retirement benefits, then came Isaac. Though she may have previously had many moments of disbelief, 
Now she had a bundle of joy. God had been faithful to his promise and he blessed her. Read Genesis 21, 6 through 7. I know I have been close to some Sarahs, some relatives and some friends. You want to see fruit, this fruit in action? Be on the front line with someone trying to conceive a child, waiting and trusting that God is going to do that for them. You don't have to have an experience with some events in your personal life to know that God will do what he said that he would do, that he would do the what seemed to be the impossible. Yes, that was an amazing and amazing journey and blessing. And one more, one of my favorite faith heroes has to be Job for so many reasons. Lord, the faith of Job and the faithfulness of God to Job. Now I can really talk a lot about Job, but if you if you just need a refresher, read the story about Job. But I have a little bit that I want to share. Job was a blameless, blessed man who trusted God completely. He had lost his children, he had lost everything. He had lost his animals. He he had lost everything. God had allowed Satan to attack Job and he had lost everything. And now by chapter two, things are looking pretty bad for Job. His running partners are looking and saying things to him. Even his wife said to him, do you still hold face? Do you still hold fast your integrity? Curse God and die. But Job said to her, you speak as one of the foolish women speaks. So let me interrupt that story for a moment. When you get ready to go on a real faith journey, when you get ready to have an event that comes in your life, please get ready and prepare for things. People will change in your life. It's going to happen. So when it happens, you have to keep it moving. Don't get wearied and exhausted with your emotions, trying to figure out all the what's and the why's. I don't care how hurtful it might be, how alone you might feel. Know this, and I know this from experience. There will come this this task will come in your journey and boy this was a hard class to take i think it may have been the hardest and the worst life lesson for me listen when people were and still dropping from my life like the orchid man had come in with an extra dose of extermination fluid it was devastating At first, I really didn't understand, and I was hurt. You start thinking, just when you need someone the most, they're gone. Can you say with me, but God, for everyone that had to walk away, change up, or just leave for whatever reason, the person, that person, God brought another person into my life. I don't care who it is, but they are there for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. And again, each one's purpose could be different. My two sons are different. One is very caring and compassionate and just hands-on loving and just takes care of me in a certain way. That's my baby boy. And then my oldest son is more technical He gets things done and he's a comedian. He's going to bring the laughter and each one represent different things. And and I need them for different things in my life, especially now on this journey. So everybody can't go with you on your journey sometimes. So 
the ones that had to leave they had to leave and then God brought the ones that needed to be there the ones that when I needed a prayer they could get a prayer through for me when I need to be when I needed someone to push me to help me realize that I got this sometimes you have people that their only concern is their only concern and so what you're going through may not be a big concern of theirs and so when you need someone to be there on this journey during this season of your life that's who God will place in your life for that that journey so you have to let go and let God and still just keep it moving so back to Job and the story of Job his wife tells Job, curse God and die. So you will need to step out on faith and the word to know that God will never leave you nor forsake you. It takes a while throughout the chapter, but at the end of the chapter, you will find how Job was blessed multiple, over, blessed better than he was from the beginning. Of course, he ate it for his loss, but God had blessed him with children. God had replaced all his, everything that was taken from him, he received back double. So his ladder was better than the, the scripture tells, that tells us how he, what he, where he was now was better than what he was before. So God can do, he was faithful to, to Job. And I am certain that God who began the good work within you will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. Philippians 1, 6, the New Living Translation. In other words, it does not matter what it looks like from your eyes, from my eyes, from the doctors, from the employer, I am certain from my own personal experience that it ain't over until God says it's over. I have come this far by faith. God will give us the grace to continue to walk by faith and to be faithful to him at all times. We walk by faith and not by sight. I challenge you today to practice your faith and apply it to every situation you find yourself in. Have faith in God the way Christ did. If you don't believe that your faith is where it should be, then pray to God to increase your faith and help it to grow. Faithfulness. Faith. Just because you don't see it does not mean that it's not happening. Thank you. Be blessed.